episode 45. Uh, as always, if you guys have anything to send in, any small and simple things, or if you have any topic suggestions, go ahead and hit us up at ears to hear podcast at gmail.com. Did I do it right that, that time? Yes, you did. Yeah. There, there we yep. go. Okay. Gold star for Alan. Historic. Historic. <laughs> We will mark the occasion. We will mark the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're doing a, I guess you could call it an emergency episode. <laughs> yeah, we had a topic planned. We we, we yeah. had a we had a topic planned, and we decided to push it because the the church, the first presidency, came out with a message yesterday, and it yep. is it, it has caused or yeah, two days ago, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I, I honestly have been on my phone texting, calling people back, and having people call me back and forth ever since. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it, me too. It's caused quite the stir. <laughs> it has caused quite the stir, absolutely. And so, it, and it, you know, it, it definitely, it, it has me nervous and stuff. And not, not, not that the announcement is, but just, I, you know, seeing the, the dissensions among amongst the the LDS community, it has me a bit nervous. So we're good. We're going to read it. We're going to talk about it. Yep. And because it's us and we're all who we are, I imagine we'll get some indifferent ideas here. This will be, I think it'll be a good discussion yeah, for everybody. For sure. for sure. Okay. So the first presidency urges Latter-day Saints to wear face masks when needed and get vaccinated against COVID-19. The First Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints sent the following message on Thursday, August 12th, 2021, to church members around the world. Dear brothers and sisters, we find ourselves fighting a war against the ravages of COVID-19 and its variants. An unrelenting pandemic, we want to do all we can to limit the spread of these viruses. We know that protection from the disease they cause can only be achieved by immunizing a very high percentage of the population. To limit exposure to these viruses, we urge the use of face masks in public meetings whenever social distancing is not possible. To provide personal protection from such severe infections, we urge individuals to be vaccinated. Available vaccines have proven to be both safe and effective. We can win this war if everyone will follow the wise and thoughtful recommendations of medical experts and government leaders. Please know of our sincere love and great concern for all of God's children. The First Presidency, Russell M. Nelson, Dallin H. Oaks, Henry B. Eyring. Okay, the let's get into it. <laughs> like the whip lady saying, boo! Boo! <laughs> So... So this, all three of us, well, I, I imagine you two are more on the same page than I am. So I, when I when I first read this, I was like, okay. So this goes against everything that I have been talking about and and everything that I have been studying on my own for the past year, right? Like I yeah. I had no plans. Yeah. yeah, I had no plans to get vaccinated. We were very vocal about all three of us were very vocal about that. Yep. Okay. What what worries me here? So I guess this is a good catalyst to get us into into what's going on here is that I've I've had well I've read some some really troubling things from fellow Latter Day Saints uh, talking about how the First Presidency in the Quorum of the Twelve has been infiltrated by Gaddy Anton right by the deep state. I have read that they they are uh, they have thrown their hat in with the globalists. So I subscribe to James T. Prout, who is author of The Last Day's Timeline. He has uh, yeah. at least two yeah. books out, and he put yeah. out he put out a newsletter yesterday. Um, and I'm going to read just one one piece of that because okay I, i'm actually this is really interesting to yes. me because he's been very vocal so yeah he's been I'm super very, vocal. yeah okay so he says uh in this new church message message there was no mention of check with your doctor it was medical experts this time it was a blanket statement of everybody every age every health condition no matter what your doctor says yes or no mine said no 
Masks. There was also a message about masks for everyone all around the world. A blanket message no matter what the local conditions are like, if they have high cases or low cases, high hospitalizations or low hospitalizations. Also, the message to follow your government leaders. He says, so what gives? Okay, this is mid-August 2021. That is important right now. All the data has come out. All the evils has come out. The type of message that the prophet of God just declared to us, and to be prayerfully considerate of, mirrors that of the globalists, unfortunately. This is after several messages in General Conference about being, uh, quote-unquote, good global citizens. At first, I thought, probably as you did, that the first president... That or sorry, that the president of the church was giving lip service to the globalists, but in this, but not in this case. At this point, uh, this means that the Church of God just threw in their hat with the globalists at the worst possible time. Fine, that is not my problem. Yeah. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints is still the Lord's church, and it is the church of prophecy. And then he goes on to say, "I'm not going to say anything more about coronavirus nor the shot." to this group interesting gotcha. so uh here, here one, one last thing but by now you all know the truth you know the facts surrounding these issues and you know what will happen next if you don't know ask your like-minded friends in the group for my past emails and see them there yeah yeah okay that's kind of like the it's kind of like a neutral ceasefire there. <laughs> it kind of it, it was, but you can you can feel that he's 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 definitely he's wrestling with this, right? He's, yeah. he's having a hard time. I was going to say it, it's uh, for me anyway, it was pretty obvious that he's he's not sure what to make of it quite yet, right. you know. Right. <laughs> well, and it's it's because this statement was so broad, was so all-encompassing. Uh, but at the same time, if if you consider it in the light of everything they have said, it's not like they changed their position. Yes, exactly. exactly. True. But they reiterated it, and they reiterated it at a time where half the church has done research into these things and feels like this is all a big conspiracy and lie. Mm-hmm. So where do you go from here? And yeah. that, that th- here's And here's the thing, Sue. So, so James T. Prout was actually probably one of the most diplomatic that I've that I've read, right? Because sure. Oh, yeah, that, he was being very kind, I think. <laughs> yeah, he was definitely very diplomatic about it. Yeah. However, he did that 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 part did bother me. I'll be honest with you guys, where he said the Church of God has thrown its hat in with the globalists. Sure. That that yeah. I, I don't like because and here's the thing, right? Here's. Here's what it comes down to, because I've, I, like I said, I've, I've been on the phone <laughs> ever since this thing came out, right? Talking to yeah. family, friends, you know what I mean? Uh, texting with, with uh, some of the listeners of the show and stuff like that. And I've seen a lot of troubling stuff in those texts. Things like Fallen Prophet... Uh, you know, like I mentioned before, deep state infiltrated uh, the high levels of the church. You know, talking about the first presidency, Quorum of the Twelve, uh, the the seventy, and stuff like that. And I think that we are in dangerous territory if we're if we're thinking that way. I'll be honest, because like I said, all three of us were kind of on different pages, but I'm probably yeah. more on I. I'm going to be the, the lone man in this episode. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can tell that who, who's going yeah. to say, you know, and, and I think we're in that part in, in the work and the glory where everybody like is turning on Joseph, right? Everyone's like, he's a fallen prophet. You know, he's, he's lost his gift to, to, to see and stuff like that. And because to be honest, it took me about probably about that day of wrestling with it, of praying about it and stuff. And I said, you know what? Everybody that's talked to me about it, I've said, okay, is, is, is Russell M. Nelson a president or is he not? Because that's what it comes down to, right? Is he a president or not? He's either the man in the watchtower who is seeing things that we can't see or he's not. That's, how it, that, that's what it comes down to, to for me. So for me, it's like he comes out with this. I, 
And we've talked about this in previous episodes. I am the type of guy that will follow orders, right? Especially when it comes from the prophet. And that's, you know, that's not just because I'm I'm great at following orders, though I am. <laughs> I admit that. You know what I mean? I totally, freely admit that. But, you know, like, like when we were on missions, we were told, look, when you teach people, the Book of Mormon is the fruit of Joseph Smith, right? Yeah. And, and if the Book of Mormon is true, it means Joseph Smith was a true prophet. So there's yeah. also implications there where basically there is an unbroken line of authority going back to Joseph Smith, right? This all hinges upon the truthfulness of the gospel, basically. Everything. Anything that these guys put out, especially when it's signed off like this in an official, uh, uh, you know, first presidency statement sure whether we like it or not this is coming out as a prophet of god right and it's causing us all a lot of heartburn it, it was it was hard like i i read that and i was like crap <laughs> you know what i mean i was like gosh dang it you know because it completely goes against everything that all three of us were have been talking about everything that we have and and, and we have been pretty fair we've been you know, we, we, we've been telling people, look, there are probably some people who should get immunized, especially old people and stuff like that. But this was a blanket statement. I mean, there's yeah. there's no getting around that. This was definitely a look, go out and get immunized. We urge you to go out and get immunized. Right. Yeah. So for me, for Alan. You know, basically for me, it's, it's like, okay. Joseph Smith said that a prophet is a prophet only when he is talking as such. I think that this, out of anything, absolutely is, is obvious to me that uh, Russell M. Nelson, our, our president and prophet, is talking as a prophet. So for me, it's like, okay, so I, I, I've got to go get immunized then, right? And, and that felt icky at first, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I've already had COVID, right? I, I should have uh, uh, antibodies in my, in my system. And my doctor has said that I do and stuff like that because we had it during the same time. But this is, is going to legit drive some people to apostatize from the church, like legitimately. And that yeah. is the part that worries me because I, I feel like I'm watching the work and the glory play out again. <laughs> If that makes sense to you guys, sure. So, well, yeah, so that's interesting. So, that's, so for that's me, where this I'm is at. this is very much in that category um, of the devil could not have picked a better thing to divide the church over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is something that it's not only a personal choice, um, but the way everyone is interpreting it. That's what strikes me as, yeah, the devil's winning. Every one of these arguments on both sides, he's causing us to hate each other. And it's, to him, this is glorious. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because there has he's been looking some... At this is the Anchorman fight. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Somebody just got the a Ocho. trident through the chest, right? Yeah. Every, everybody showed up, you know? Yeah. I think Brick just killed a guy. That's pretty right. sure. I think Brick just killed yeah. a guy. <laughs> You probably should lay low for a while. Uh, you're probably wanted for murder. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, this, this, like you say, looking online, looking at all the different posts from different people, it is all over. Uh, as far as, you know, I'm done with the church, or now I have to go get it, or I can't understand where the prophet's coming from. Um, I still believe that the handbook was not violated in this message. The handbook specifically lays out, and if they change that, I think that is when you have a signal that, I would say something is wrong, because the handbook specifically lays out that it is upon each individual to prayerfully decide if they're going to get vaccinated. So are you are you talking the, the recent... Um update that they just did like a couple months ago yeah even even with yeah. that okay there is it's yeah. not a mandatory thing yeah 
in the handbook, yeah. You, you know, the statement itself, it says we urge people to get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. It did not say this is now equivalent to the word of wisdom and you will have a temple recommend question. Did you get vaccinated? Right. So there is a difference there. I still believe there is room and maybe I'm the odd man out. Maybe if the prophet wants to clarify, go ahead and change the handbook to say, and go ahead and change the temple recommend to say, do you understand and obey the word of wisdom? Have you got vaccinated? So there is still in my mind room. Now, obviously this is, if you ask me, just about the worst timing for an announcement like this you could possibly do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because even though we're going through supposedly this new variant and all these new diseases, um, again, like you're saying, Alan, I have done, I don't know how many countless hours of research into COVID, into the vaccines, into the diseases and variants, into the statistical numbers, uh, the CDC's faults and and back and forth reporting on it where they've contradicted themselves. Um, and so to have the, the church leaders come down on this in light of all of my study, I think what we're all doing is we're projecting on the leadership of the church. Oh, hey, if I know this stuff, then they must know it too. And I don't think that's appropriate. I don't think it's appropriate to assume that the prophet literally knows everything. Yeah. Because we're not Catholics. We don't have an infallible Pope. So I think it's important to go back in time and discuss a few cases where things have changed through the history of the church in order to get a feel for now, because a lot of the arguments people are making is like you said, Alan, if the prophet speaks in a prophetic way, that is law, it never changes, etc. So, if, if I can take a step back and go back to Joseph Smith, when he was practicing polygamy, and apostles were preaching against polygamy, imagine what's going through his head. Imagine as he's in a conference, and quietly practicing that doctrine and his apostles are preaching against it and men who later both apostatized from the church and who later came to practice the doctrine themselves were all getting up on stands preaching against the evils of slavery and and of polygamy um you, you go forward just a little bit to after he passes, and eventually this doctrine becomes a practice of the church. And I think we as members of the church have been conditioned to think that literally everything out of every apostle's mouth and the prophet in a conference setting is that same, this is the word of the Lord, so who was right? Was it the people preaching against polygamy or the people preaching for it or the people who now preach against polygamy now that we don't do it. And I think the context of time is absolutely necessary to understand that none of these people were acting in a bad interest or a dissuading away from Christ kind of perspective. The same thing is true of slavery. Slavery was something that was not only preached against, um, but also the church at one point had slaves. There's a monument in Salt Lake that points out things like this, that when Utah became its own state, it became a slave state. And one man, when upon his death, tithed his slave to the church The church had him for a few years before releasing him. Uh, Like, again, uh, is slavery wrong? Is it right? Well, obviously, in 2021, we can look back at history and make all these accusations. We can do the same thing with racism. 
and we can all get mad at Brigham Young for saying stuff about black people. So was he a prophet? There have been times where prophets have said blacks will never hold the priesthood. Well, obviously, in the course of history, 2020 vision, looking back, we know they're wrong. Does that void their godliness? Does that void their prophetic nature or instruction? Yeah. Um, I could go on with probably a few more things like this, but I, I hope I've made my point clear that, yeah. you know what, I will go into one more because this, I think, um, lends a lot of credibility to what I'm trying to say. Brigham Young, as an extension from Joseph, taught the Adam-God theory. And he taught it in general conferences. Yep, over the pulpit. <clears throat> over yeah. the pulpit, and to the point where he introduced it as something taught at the veil. Yeah. Now, if you think that isn't church doctrine by that point, do well, you agree with Joseph Fielding Smith? To it. Because later down the road, Joseph Fielding Smith said, because Brigham never came to the brethren to in officially induce it as a doctrine of the church, that it wasn't official and salvation dependent as a doctrine of the church. And a lot of those things were pulled back. In fact, Brigham Young, the very last year of his life, said, you know, perhaps the one mistake I made was in teaching this doctrine in public. And you have a pullback away from a doctrine. And later down the road, you have Bruce R. McConkie saying it's an evil doctrine to teach. Yeah. So no matter what side you fall on belief in Adam God theory, you're disagreeing with a prophet. No matter what side you fall on polygamy, you're going to be disagreeing with a prophet. No matter what side you fall on slavery, you're going to be disagreeing with a prophet. At some point in history, you can find some reference, some saying, some thing, and anti-Mormons use this kind of stuff all the time to dissuade people from belief in the church. Yeah. And it's because, as a, <clears throat> as a culture, we've conditioned ourselves into believing in infallibility of our leaders. That they can't make mistakes, that they must know everything, that because they're guided by God, there's no possible way they could say something that is untrue or that could cause harm or et cetera. And as I look at this announcement, not only is there room for choice, but I see in all of the people's interpretation of it that there isn't room for choice. Yeah. That to me is the problem is that everyone looking at this statement is saying, well, they must know everything I know because they're prophets. They, they must have got the same information I got and they didn't just decided differently because they're prophets. And because they decided differently, you know, I've had revelations on these things. Therefore, my revelations are now contradictory to that of the church. Um, me personally, I have given people blessings and literally healed them from sicknesses caused by these vaccines. And to have the church encourage people to get them, and then other members interpret that on one side as justification for what they've done, on the other side as a mandate they have to go get it. I think both perspectives uh, have flaw because they are assumptions on the thoughts of what our prophet has learned and what he knows. This didn't change church policy. I, st I haven't got a phone call saying, hey, we're going back to masks. Um, I haven't got a, and, and who knows, maybe it'll come. Yeah, I think, but, that's, I think that's coming. <laughs> yeah, and, and I also have, in that handbook, I see those <laughs> words that each person has the choice of whether or not they get vaccinated. And I take solace in knowing that if I've learned something different than the prophet or more than the prophet, 
that does also does not mean that I'm blaspheming that I can learn something he doesn't know. I mean, back again to the Adam God theory, Brigham Young said he received answers to that in revelation, but we don't teach it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, on this, um, if this is a literal guidance of God to the prophet to encourage members of the church to do this, it may very well be a thing of, and again, this is speculation, and this is where everyone's getting in trouble. But if we speculate, why can't we speculate on the positive? Maybe this is something where God is just trying to prevent persecution of the church. But he's trusting that there will be people plenty who don't get the vaccine still because they have been informed by him through revelation directly to them. And any instruction from the prophet should, I believe, be accompanied by our own attempt to receive revelation. Sure. So I yeah. guess, wrap it all up, I really don't think that the prophet, by making a statement that I disagree with, has fallen from grace. I think that's... To assume that is like, well, then might as well put me at a, as the head of the church. Yeah. I'll yeah. go start my own because apparently I'm amazing. <laughs> yeah. No, of, obviously not. <clears throat> but if we, if we can have some humility and have some compassion that, hey, you know what? This obviously didn't come across too great to a whole lot of people. Um maybe we can understand a little more that these people are struggling with something. And honestly, if they're just getting a different path of information than me, this isn't that weird. If, if yeah. they're getting all their news and all their media from CNN and MSNBC, and they're not really looking into all the stuff I'm looking into, then it's not like they're, making a recommendation out of some malicious intent. Yeah, I definitely don't think yeah. that they are malicious. That's for sure. Hey, we can right. all agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it is possible that they're acting on the light knowledge they have and that the light knowledge they have is different than me. Yeah. I think, I think probably where we get into trouble with all of this is we we have the nuclear options on this, right? Either it's blind, pure devotion to whatever this is, or it's pure rejection. And the the nuance and the middle ground of this, I think everyone's trying to take away. And and I think it's because we're, I mean, all of us, especially as members of the church, we're trying to humble ourselves before God and do his will, right? And so for some of us that has been up till now not doing, you know, not getting the vaccine, not wearing masks, and for others it has been 100% doing that. And so you have you have President Nielsen coming out and, and saying this, and I, I think like what you're saying, Kimball, like how this could be given is really important, the context. I mean, it really could have just been amount of them saying, hey, you know, for whatever reason, our membership maybe feels a little uncomfortable with getting a vaccine. Let's put out a statement so that everyone who feels like they're on the edge, they feel comfortable doing it. You know, they know where the church stands on it, whatever. Sure. But, but for me, like, this was, this has been a, this has probably been the issue, you know, over the last couple of years at this point of, of stuff that I've struggled with. You know, you fast, you know, rewind, I mean, back to Curtis, you know, six, five, four years ago, I never would have envisioned myself ever thinking or doing something other than what the prophet was said, right? Like, it just, I, he, you know, I, I get something like this and I'll just act on it on instinct, no problem. But what's happened since then is I've had to, I've had to struggle through the muck of, of not knowing which direction to go on certain things. 
And so, and because the church hadn't said anything, I was forced to struggle on my own and figure it out. And so I had real supplication to the Lord. Like, I took a lot of time and a lot of effort in praying because I really couldn't reason it out myself. I had so many different sources on each side. And so I went to him in, in supplication and prayer, and and I I worked. I mean, you talk about working for revelation and, and faith. Like, I, I put a lot of heart, energy, a lot of time, a lot of faith into trying to figure out what it is the Lord wanted me to do. And it was, I felt that I, I got a strong and discernible answer. And there's not been very many times in my life that I can look at something and say, that was 100% not from me and from God. And I knew it. I had just the strongest impression about that. And that's happened twice in the last year over, over these issues. Once was right before masks were taken down, you know, the mask mandate fell in Utah. Uh, I was, you know, I'd been struggling with it for months and I was about to put my mask on to go into a store and it was discernible, palpable. I felt a strong impression that the Lord told me that I should not be wearing a mask anymore. And I honestly, I fought against it for a while. I didn't, <laughs> for at least a week or so, I still kept wearing it whenever I go places because I it was so out of my character. I didn't want to be contentious. I didn't want to be, you know, trying to make a point to people that saw me, right? But every time I would go to put it on, the spirit would hit me again. It's like, hey, I've told you what you're supposed to be doing. Why? It's almost like, Christ with Peter, you know, after he's resurrected, he's like, Peter, what are you still doing here fishing? You know, like I had those impressions. And, and so then, you know, the vaccine comes around and, and once again, turmoil, heartache over this. And, and I felt just strong, discernible answer along the same lines that spoke peace to my heart of what I should do in this situation. And so then, you know, this happens. Right. And I do think that assessing new information is important and to to go back to the Lord and say, do I have this right? You know, and, and I've been doing that. And as of yet, I don't feel the need to change what I'm doing. I, I still feel the Lord telling me that I'm on the right course for me. But that doesn't mean that the prophet is is lost his prophetic gift, right? If right. if that was the case, then when Nephi killed Laban, Moses was a fallen prophet, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I know that there's some Jewish law in there that makes it better, but I mean, just imagine how difficult it must have been for Nephi to go back to his family and try to talk to them about why he had to kill this person that he felt the spirit fall upon him in such a discernible way and tell him that he needed to kill this person to do what they did. You know, they were Jewish family. They, they lived under the law. I imagine Laman and Lemuel probably had a hard time listening to Nephi, even more so after that, because he was going against what Moses had been teaching, right? And so I think for me, with this particular issue, I think what decision is made is far less important than how this decision is made. I mean, I've there's multiple people in my life who have had strong, discernible uh, spiritual impressions to go the opposite direction, to get the vaccine, to wear a mask. And I feel great about that. I w I'm glad. <laughs> if anything, it encourages my heart to know that the Lord can tell different people different things. And I think we need to be really careful about how we interact with people, especially people who who feel like they need to distance themselves from the church over this, because there is there is a lot, I think, that goes into some people deciding to leave the church. Right. There is I think there is hours of heartache and pain and and effort that these people are going through because Leaving the church is not, it's not like, you know, stamping, you know, leaving a club, you know, like this is a, a giant support system, right? Like our whole lives get wrapped up in how we live this. 
And so for people who, for whatever reason, feel like this is the final straw, I think we need to be especially careful about how we interact and talk with them and give them love and respect and, and, and try to show that much more love to them because these are not like decisions. I'm sure, there, I'm sure some people just, you know, <laughs> really nearly can't get any more. But from my experience, people who have left the church, this is this is hard decisions to be made. It's because they feel so wrapped up in whatever it is. And so this is not going to be, it's not going to be easy. <laughs> right. And so for me, the switch got flicked. You know, if, if the church had weighed in earlier, I don't know what would have happened, but they didn't. And so I listened to the Lord and, and like healing 512, it says it is upon the rock of Christ that we build our foundation. And so that when, you know, the, the devil sends forth his, his whirlwinds, his shafts in the whirlwind, his commotion, which is what I feel what we're seeing right now, that we can rely on Christ. And for me, that's where I, I stand on this. I, I think each and every one of us should and, and has the right to get a direct answer from, from God directly on it. And he may say, yes, do what the prophet's saying. You know, do what President Nelson is saying. He's, you know, for you, this is the right answer. He may look to you and say, for you, I want you to do something different. And that should be okay. We should be, we should have space for everyone to go that direction. And the only thing I can do is just ask people to, to go that route, to just go the extra mile. I think we're, we're in such dangerous territory, I think, when we will, without thought or care, just take someone else's decision and do it. I, and I, I know that's sticky ground when it comes to a prophet, especially. But the Lord doesn't teach dependence on the prophets. The Lord teaches dependence on him, right? And the prophets, they can be his servants, and they can give his word. But I think it's so much more important that we make sure that we're following God and Christ in our decisions. And if it leads us to be in harmony with church policy, awesome. But if not, that's okay, too. I mean, just, just recently, right, President Nelson took away Saturday session, and then he brought it back. It was, it was wrong to baptize children of homosexual parents, and now it's okay again. Like, things change, and I think they're, they're in the process of trying to figure this out, too. And I don't think we should necessarily assume that this is going to change, but when, when we're, we're dealing in a, a celestial world, celestial problems, things change. I think the only solace that really can be found, and if you're having heart commotion over this, take it to the Lord. Sorry, I, that was not kind of long. No, that's all <laughs> right. Good. I think we all had a long turn. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that, so I, 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 I like what you guys are saying, you know what I mean? We definitely have to have personal revelation, right? We, we know that it will be a matter of survival, as President Nelson has said, in the coming days, right? said we won't survive what's coming if we don't have personal revelation. Yep. I think that, I think that um, especially since I, I was telling Curtis earlier before Kimball jumped on that I, I read the entirety of Daniel chapter or D Daniel 11 by uh, Michael B. Rush. Gotcha. And, you know, if you're looking at scripture, if you're looking at stuff, there's going to come a time in, in the, the saints' uh, history when we are cut off from our church leadership. It's like we're not going to be allowed to have the first presidency in the Quorum of the Twelve you know, to, uh, be, be able to talk to us. Now, whether that's because of authoritarian stuff, which is what I think it absolutely will it be. Take the, an EMP would do it. Exactly. It could be an EMP that would bring us back to the dark ages. You know what I mean? Whatever, whatever the case is, there will come yeah. a time when we are severed from church leadership, and that will be an incredibly heavy burden to be able to bear. How about the electrical disturbance that comes from an approaching planet? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or, you know, a, a bunch of different pieces of Earth coming back together, right, to, to, to restore yep. the Earth to its former size and glory and stuff like that. So there's going to be things yeah. that are going to happen. 
And, you know, the, the original internet of revelation is going to be the only thing that's going to connect I- anybody together, right? Yeah. So, but, but it's well, interesting. Well, we know very well that in the middle of all that, about half or more of the population of the world will die oh, from yeah. all kinds of calamities. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So in a very literal way, that could be, hey, you didn't get the revelation. This meteor was coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And now you're dead. <laughs> yep. Okay, but <laughs> but I, you know, I, so so in, in looking at that, and and in looking how how much of it, like, because I felt that statement, right? I felt that where it was like that that is a burden. If I'm cut off from the twelve and from the first presidency, that's a ginormous burden. You know, e- even the seventy and stuff. Like there is a chain of a com- of command for a reason, and. Yep. Being a military man, I, I see why it works, right? Because yeah. people generally are morons. You know what I mean? Like let's <laughs> let's be honest here, you know. Government I, of the retarded, by the retarded, <laughs> and for exactly, the retarded. Exactly. <laughs> Especially in our day and age. The actual definition of democracy. <laughs> but for me, you know, and I count myself among that group. It's like, look, like we we get things wrong all the time. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those things. It's like you you do the best with, with the information that you got. Yeah. So, but I, I worry when people like like James T. Prout that has a big platform with a lot of people who are subscribed to him, he, he has a lot of weight, right, on his shoulders. Sure. And he and for him to say that the Church of God has thrown in with the globalists, he's what he's saying is that we have thrown in with Gaddy Anton. That bothers me. You know what I mean? I because I, totally. yeah. I I don't see that. I, I I don't agree with it. And I quite honestly, I I I refuse and rebuke it. I say no, that's not true. There's no way. Yeah. Well, because I mean that you know it's that statement. Go ahead, first. Requires it requires hard questions to be asked right if you can if you can go along with that statement you have to get into the minutia the the very heavy details of what you believe and where you stand on things and it's it's not comfortable right it it's it puts you in this place where you're questioning long held deep beliefs and so yeah like it's i I, it's so I, i get it like we to some degree either we have to be able to say no i can't fall in with that it doesn't work for me or we can say okay maybe that's correct what does that mean and does my does my testimonies allow space for this can my testimony handle this kind of heavy lifting and and that's an answer that i think only each every one of us can ask or, or answer for ourselves like it's that's that's heavy stuff right to deal with Oh, it, it is right. for sure, and, and it's it's like, to to me, it's like, look, I've seen how the Gadiantons operate in the Book of Mormon. I see how they operate now, like, they set and, and they when they infiltrate, they they do it through murder. They do it through you know all this backstabbing and stuff, and they put their own people in. Right, that is completely. Doesn't work with, with with our church leadership, right? Maybe at a bishop level or something like that. You know what I mean? Maybe they can go to a bishop and, and they can convince a bishop or something, right? Maybe even going all the way up to a seventy or something like that. But when we start to when we start to get into territory like this, I think we're on a slippery slope because number one, are we going to pick and choose whenever something that the prophet says is legit or not? Now we have the hindsight. You know, the, the ability of hindsight today to look back on some of the, these prophetic things, and for whatever reason, they sometimes they did change their mind, right? I've had a lot of people throw yeah. that in my face, where they're like, look, it's kind of interesting that uh, that blacks in the priesthood, you know, that whole thing came about at a time when, when Congress, you know, did some, some things, and it's like, you know what? That's not my problem, <laughs> you know? I, <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't really care, because it's like... It, I know that the church is true. I know that the that the, the the president of the church is indeed a prophet of God. I know that the twelve apostles are legit apostles. I think that there is some things that are that are um, go under the radar with that, 
and, and I'm not going to go into it too much, but suffice it to say that when Christ was on the earth, he washed the feet of the twelve apostles, right? And that uh, has been linked to an ordinance. I think yeah. that ordinance continues on whenever an apostle is called today. And that's all I'll say about it because it's very sacred. But when we start to, when we start to say, like I have heard and and seen in a lot of the channels and stuff like that, where they're like, where they're like, oh, he's just he's just going off of his because he's a former doctor or he's a former, and it's like you know what, maybe he is going off of that, but I can't help but notice that we have a doctor put in as a prophet during this time. You know what I mean? Like th there's a bunch of things like that that you can look at, and you can look at. All, all you want, you, you can look at it the other way, and you know what I mean. And like, like, just like you're saying, it's like we can take this information, and we can start to mold it to however our worldview fits, right? Which is a lot what a lot yeah. of people are doing. And for for Alan, I'm a very simple man, <laughs> you know. I I delight <laughs> I delight in plain and precious things, you know. And when the church comes out with a statement like this, I I like. I think that to go the conspiracy route and say, well, they're, they're just doing this because they are, they're in with the Gadiantans, or they're doing this because they want to get the, the world off their back. Like The world is going to be on the church's back from here on until Christ comes, right? We're going to experience hardcore persecution. The church isn't going to give ground on some things. It's just not going to happen. I'd say on yeah. probably 95% of things. And a lot of people throw that in our face and say, oh, look, you... You know your church leadership backed up, backed off on the whole gay marriage thing. You know, and and having uh, children baptized it's like that's that that is policy, right? That's definitely policy. When I get something like this, I'm not looking at it as policy. Like I'll, I'm I'm just being brutally honest here, right? When I get something like this, oh. I know they've prayed about it. I know these guys are looking at the evidence. I know that they are considering things. These guys are all extremely educated men, right? These guys, you know, especially looking at President Nelson, he's, you know, one of the the renowned, you know, retired heart surgeons in the world and stuff like that. Like, I think that we need to be very, very careful. And the, the whole reason we're having this conversation is because we have a platform and we have an audience, Right. And I feel that weight on my shoulders where it's like, you know what, if, like, if, if we are going to, and, and this is my entire, uh, really, this is the entire crux of, of why we're having this conversation, I think, in the first place, is like, if we lead uh, our brothers and sisters away from, from the president of the church, I think that we are playing into Satan's hands. Hardcore. Hardcore. Right? I think that we need to be extremely careful when we have a platform like this, because the the first presidency has a platform, right? We're all we're all now reacting because of the platform, right? Because yep. of of this message that they put out that people are saying is irresponsible. You know what I mean? That are that are saying, oh, why the freak would they put this out now? You know, it's never going to be convenient to be a member of the church. That I've I've accepted that, right? Especially when I have to eat crow for a year's worth of podcasts, right? <laughs> but that's my biggest thing is it's like, and, and if, you know, it, it all can be summed up. It's like, look, follow the prophet. He knows the way. You know, he's the guy up on the watchtower. And I'm not discounting anything you guys are saying at all, right? I think we absolutely need to pray about this. We need to, to pray that we can that we can see where the first presidency is coming from and go from there, right? For me, I'm taking this at face value because I, I don't think it goes any deeper than face value. I think that it is what it is, right? I think they're saying, look, to limit the exposure to viruses, we urge the use of face masks. Don't like it. I hate it. But if that's what they're saying, I'll do it. You know what I mean? And whenever, or to provide... Personal protections, we urge individuals to be vaccinated. Okay, I have to assume that they're looking at all the evidence I have looked at and that they're still saying, look, yeah, get vaccinated. Does that mean something else is coming? I think that's more of an appropriate way to look at this or angle to look at this other than Gaddy Atten has infiltrated the church uh, high levels, right? Because if that, if that has happened, then 
the, the, the true church, this isn't the true church. I don't believe that that can happen and this be the true church at the same time. I, I don't buy that. You know, we, we know that the, that the prophet cannot lead the church astray, you know, and, and, and have people follow him and his admonitions, especially in official capacity like this, or his life would be taken. If we believe all this, all this jazz, right, all this gospel jazz, if we believe in, in the prophet, then that holds a lot of weight, right? That holds a ton of weight. And for me, I, I honestly, and I've made this connection with people I've talked to. I was like, look, when Moses held up the brazen serpent, he said, guys, all you got to do is look at this thing. And some people didn't look at it. Because they had the free agency, right? They said, you know what? That's stupid. <laughs> I don't want to look at that. I think that's lame, you know? I'm going to sit here and suffer with this poisonous, fiery serpent bite. I don't know if that applies to this, you know what I mean? But I'm thinking in, in those terms. I'm like, you know what? Is there something else coming that this is going to inoculate me against? I don't know. But the prophet is the guy up on the watchtower. I'm a foot soldier down here in the muck. And I can't see beyond the inside of my fort, right? All I got is what the guy on the watchtower is telling me to do and giving me advice. Yeah. So I can listen yeah. to it or I can not listen to it. That, that's our choice, really. And that's totally fine, right? Totally fine. Because there's going to be, just like Curtis was saying, and Kimball, I think, mentioned this. And I'm a little long-winded here, sorry. I'll give you guys a chance here to rebuttal in a second. but No worries. But... I think that I think that there are like I have a cousin who had a severe reaction to to um a, just like a regular everyday uh what's it called I, I lost it vaccination right like whether that was MMR or whatever they give you when you're a baby he had a severe reaction to it and it's to this day it's jacked him up now should should he get it I don't know you know what I mean. I think that he should take it to the Lord and he should talk to his doctor and stuff like that because that's an extreme case and we're always going to have those. But for the regular everyday member, I don't know. I, I, I think we have some face value stuff that we have to cope with here. I think part of the problem is that we're all intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Are we no kibble? Are we really? <laughs> I know, right. <laughs> so Aristotle said there's only one way to avoid criticism. To do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. You know, we're all seeing this. They did something, so there's going to be criticism. Right. No matter what position they fell on, there was going to be criticism. Imagine if they had come out and said, hey, these vaccines aren't safe. Imagine the criticism from everybody who had taken them because they looked at the prophet and said, oh, you did take it. And I took it because you took it. So there is, no matter what you do, you're going to be criticized. Right. Um, yeah. And I, it's interesting because I do think there's room for a difference of information among the prophet and me. Um, so, for example, I followed some of these, you know, underground radio shows and, and news sites and things. And I say underground because they're being suppressed by a gigantic Gadianton media corporate complex and yeah. government, right? Those are the only ones I trust now. <laughs> right. And, uh, for example, when they say the vaccines are safe and effective, well, there's literally like a hundred articles I could point to that have said they're not safe because they've killed tens of thousands of people. And that they're not effective because, I mean, Israel, the, the most vaccinated country, is having massive outbreaks. I've watched, I watched one man who was a man who makes vaccines. It's his entire career. He's, he's beyond high levels of vaccine manufacturing, creation, all that stuff. And he was saying, this vaccine is bad because of the way it's being applied that it's turning everyone's immune systems into a one option only defense system and everything else is getting through. And so this idea of a vaccine being good, well, this vaccine forces your immune system into only defending against one thing and then everyone else getting sick from everything else. And then of course I've seen all these news stories that 
um, and, and this is quite significant, there's a man in Canada who fought against mask mandates. He fought against the, the state by demanding that they prove COVID exists. Simple as that, right? Like, mm-hmm. just show me documentation that we've isolated this and we have an actual proof medically that this exists. Yeah. Canada was not able to produce that document and for some reason they backed off their mask mandate. <laughs> and not only that, but there have been a thousand FOIA requests now to most nations on, on the planet, not all, and not a single country has been able to produce that document where they've isolated this as a disease. And so, I mean, you think that would be the first thing, the first priority of any government is to establish justification for all these measures that we're going into. Right. When they've in fact not been able to. And, okay, so I I remember like two, three months in to all this junk, um, Sean Hannity talking about how amazing it is that China was able to give the world the genetic blueprint of COVID. Yeah. They were able to, to map it. it. Usually it takes three to five years to do anything like that, to map the DNA of a virus. And they were able to do it this fast. This is, this is a miracle. Turns out what China gave wasn't the actual mapping of COVID. It was basically, let's just take a, a surgery of Frankenstein five viruses together Mm -hmm. and we submit that and that's what these vaccines the mrna has been based on is these five frankenstein patched together virus codes Mm -hmm. so your body isn't even fighting against quote-unquote covid because covid isn't again proven to even exist and they're PCR tests are based on this Frankenstein code. So it's telling you positives for five different kinds of diseases, including just flu. Yeah. And the CDC has actually announced we're not doing these PCR tests anymore. When? Well, actually of this year, December is when they're going to stop. So they're still doing them despite the fact they've announced that these tests can't tell the difference between a regular cold, the flu or COVID, whatever that is. And so we have death rates go from three, four hundred thousand a year for flus, 2020, 20,000 deaths from flus. And everything else is COVID because all flu is being called COVID. All colds are being called COVID. All sicknesses are being called COVID. And how can you have a variant from something you haven't identified? So how can there be a Delta variant or any other variant when you haven't identified the original virus? Or at least they haven't proven to us as citizens of the world that they've identified the virus. Right. And so to me, like, again, I'm looking at all these studies. I'm looking at study after study where the CDC themselves and Fauci themselves are saying masks don't work prior to all of this. And then they say that it does. And then they say you don't have to wear it if you're vaccinated. And then they say you do have to wear it because you're even if you're vaccinated because the vaccinated are the ones who are spreading all these diseases because right. their immune systems have been weakened and they're now carriers. And so as I as I look at all this information, I know for a fact because I talk to so many people about it that I'm the only person who has looked into all of this of the random people I talk to yeah. <laughs> in, in real life. Yeah. So I have a hard time looking at a prophet and projecting, oh, he must know everything that's in my head. I mean, I have a really hard time thinking that it's impossible for, for the prophet to not be omniscient. <laughs> so, and another argument that I've seen a lot on Facebook is, do you really think a prophet would be allowed to do something that could cause harm to people? And I'm like, well, uh, <clears throat> Joseph took a lot of people on a march and not all of them lived. So yes, because it's not about strictly, does God care if we live or die? And yeah. that may sound harsh. Does God care if you live or die? And it's because we're so obsessed with living 
Yeah. To God, God death is just not... another doorway. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's true. God cares about how you live, not if. If God cared about if we live or die, and that was it, do you really think there'd be a billion abortions? Do you really think there'd be the Holocaust? Do you think there would have been persecution to the saints and murders and rapes? I mean, if, if we're really looking at God prevents all bad things, he doesn't allow bad things to happen, then think about the leap of logic that that takes us to. I mean, of course God allows bad things to happen because it's not the word allow. The word allow shouldn't even belong there. God has set up a system in which we are placed where there is absolute malevolence in the world. There's a lot of evil, including the Gadiantans. There's a lot of bad things going on. It's more important how we, re how we, re we react to all of this than him stopping it all. Because how we act is the determination, in the light of all these things, it's the way we build character, and it's the only way we become like God, is to be in the situation that is so full of wickedness and evil that the filtration process only allows for the best to come out and the worst to be filtered away. And so as I look at all these different things from definitions of the virus, the vaccines, the masks, all the different advices, um, I don't, and I know this is crazy, I don't couch this announcement from church as, well, they put it on the temple recommend. This is now officially a Doctrine and Covenants chapter. Like, m call me crazy if you want. I, I, can I please, can I please have that opinion and not apostatize from the church? <laughs> I mean, if you want to kick me out, I guess I have no choice. There's people who have authority over me, and if they say, "Well, show me your green card," then instead of you know your government being the show me your papers, I guess it'll be our church doing it, and that'll suck because they'll kick me out. But it, the hard thing for me is seeing so many comments online where it's basically, hey, you go along with this or you're apostate and the church should excommunicate you. And it's like, can't, can't you see a third option? Everyone is going so black and white on all these topics. Yeah. Yep. And it's like, in order to go black and white, you have to make so many assumptions about what everyone else is thinking and every information everyone else is thinking. And literally the only person that can do that is God, so therefore everyone making those assumptions must have a really high opinion of themselves. Yeah. I've got, I want to I wanna backtrack a little bit because uh, there's some things that were said that I want to I wanna respond on to i like where we're at right now <laughs> and, and i don't want to i don't want to detract but so like alan you were you're mentioning that you give this announcement more weight well correct me if i'm wrong more weight than the announcement about not being able to baptize uh children of homosexual parents is that correct yeah i think so yeah definitely okay so i i'm going to disagree on that because I actually think the policy that is the gateholder for ordinances that extend beyond this life is way more of value than whether or not you get a vaccine that may or may not result in you having a shorter lifespan on this earth. For me, the fact that they're willing to change their mind left and right about whether or not you can be baptized, which Christ said you need in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. For me, that is way more dramatic than this. And the fact that they're able to change their mind forward and backward on that is, I think, is it's a good indication of the fact that sometimes things are out of whack. Sometimes things need to be workshopped a little bit. And also, I mean, yeah, we have, we have the prophet on the watchtower 
and we are down in the muck, but we also, every single one of us, has a right to a relationship with our Heavenly Father and with our Savior. And He will, and He does, talk to each and every one of us. It is constant as the sunshine, as rain falling down. And the only thing that gets in the way of that is us, if we put up some sort of shade or some sort of umbrella. And so for me, once again, like this comes back to not so much what decision you decide to make, but how you decide to make that decision. Do you not follow this counsel because you're going to stick it to the man and to the prophet and because the seven or eight sources you found on the internet tell you that it's wrong? Or do you not take it because you feel strongly that Christ is talking to you individually and telling you that you should do something different? Do you follow this counsel because the prophet said it and that's good enough for me? Or do you follow this counsel because you have a relationship with your Heavenly Father? You believe that he is speaking to you, that the, that the President Nelson is saying something specifically that you need to follow. Like, that's, I mean, there's so much nuance, like Kimball was saying, in this decision that's not being considered. And if almost if, like there's not just people, heaven and hell. <laughs> yeah. And 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 that's why we, we can't go nuclear. We can't go black and white on this because it's not that simple for each and every one of us. We need to we need to allow space for people to come up with their own thoughts and reasonings for this. And we have ours, and I think that's fair enough to to push forward, but I think it's actually I would say it is imperative. For each and every one of us, no matter which side of this issue we are on, I think we need to take a step back and be willing to full heartedly open our hearts to the other side. Be 100 percent back down your defenses and say, could I be wrong? And to really, with full effort, give the other option a possible chance in your heart. Because that's, in my opinion, that's how revelation really needs to happen. You know, in the scriptures, when they talk about people who are past feeling, you know, we want to make sure that we're not in that position on either end of this. Because if we do, then we are we are losing the connection with the real source of information, and that is our Heavenly Father, and that is Jesus Christ. And, you know, and, and these are, we're, we're in the nitty-gritty of this, right? We're talking, where's the proper place of the prophet? Where do you put the certain things that the prophet says? How do you rank that with Revelation? Where do you place all of these things? And I don't think there's going to be a silver bullet answer for this that we're going to be able to give. And I'm, I'm hoping that everybody who's listening, at least, you know, they found somebody that they go, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. And hopefully everyone listening has also gone, you know, those are some good points. I need to consider those points. And as long as we're thoughtfully, prayerfully considering how to move forward, I don't think we can go wrong. I really don't. As long as you're doing it the right way. Oh, for sure. And I, you know, it, it reminds me of the, um, there's a talk from General Conference in 2010. It's October 2010. I'll try to remember to put the link in on this, but in case I don't, October 2010. Uh, Dallin H. Oaks, Two Lines of Communication, right? And the quote is, we must both, we must use both the personal line and the priesthood line in proper balance to achieve the growth that is the purpose of mortal life. Yeah. Right. And I think that sums it up very well. Yeah. But, you know, like for me, <clears throat> for me, the, the, the thing that I was worried about, and I sent you guys a novel yesterday in, in a text message, you know, <laughs> where I said, you know, <laughs> I don't want this platform to be used to dissuade members of the church, our brothers and sisters, people that value our opinion for whatever reason, you know. A couple of guys. I don't know why. I know, right? A, so a, a couple of guys who get together and just decided to push record on some conversations, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, All those millions of followers we have. I know, right? The millions <laughs> and millions. <laughs> but that that was it. Almost freaked me out a little bit because I, you know, I was like, "Look, I don't want this to be used." In the day of judgment, where I'm standing before the bar of God, and Christ is like, "Uh." I told my prophet to do something, you know, or I was at least backing him up, you know. I, I, I have him there for a reason, and you told people to do differently. That's my main concern, right? 
Now, mm-hmm. obviously, this is this is something that you you need to take to the Lord, and you need to see is this you know is this something that I need to do? And for me, there is a certain black and whiteness to it, right? Not, and that's not to say yeah. that's not to say that that if you don't do this, you're a godless animal and you should be exiled. I'm not saying that at all, and I don't believe that at mm-hmm. all. I don't think they believe it, right? I don't think the first presidency yeah. believes that. No. I mean, just you're just interfacing with it yes. where you're at. There's many you people know? online who, who would say that, and they're wrong, and they should repent, right? Because yes. it, it's just like those bishops who were like kicking people out of church for not wearing a mask. Exa- yes, that was wrong. Yeah. And then they got censored. They yeah. got censured. Yeah by their leaders they're like look yeah. this is a recommendation not a mandate we're not it's not okay to kick people out of church no that yeah that, yeah. that shooting beyond the mark you could say right exactly yeah yep. and, and so Unrighteous so, dominion. <clears throat> so I, I honestly I think that we are I think we're a lot more in line than I thought we were at first <laughs> you yeah know? Because I was it's, worried it's weird at first. that texting doesn't afford for a lot of nuance that <laughs> we can get across our points. Right. I, I think that this discussion has been really good because I think we all we all still agree on the major things. Right. <laughs> really. No, for sure. And Sorry, Alan. Go ahead. No, no, and, and it's you know, for, but but for me, for Alan's you know point of view, and for the way that I have lived my life, like. I have always, always, always lived my life according to Joseph Smith's edict where he says, I've made this my rule when the Lord commands do it. And I take that, like, and then this isn't to put uh, Russell M. Nelson, President Nelson, up on a pedestal to say he's infallible, but sure. he is the mouthpiece of the main man, right, of Jesus Christ, of the Lord. You know, we're talking about the, the Messiah, right? So when he comes out yeah. and he puts his seal of approval on something, that carries a lot of weight with me. And regardless of, of whether it's more or less weight than past edicts, right, of past things that they put out, if they come out tomorrow and, and change something on this or tweak something on this, is my testimony going to be wrecked by that? No. I don't think yours would either. You know what I mean? Nope. But, no. But, you know, it, it's one of those things where I live my life according to things like this because I know that he is a mouthpiece of God so for me it is a little more black and white for you guys it's not and that's totally fine and I think that there is yeah. room for for everybody to do what they want with this right because it's all about choice like in the pre-existence you had a choice right here's the path you can either take it or not you know what I mean and that's not to say this is on level with that that's probably a poor example <laughs> but you see what I'm saying here is that it's always no. been like this. They always say, look, we need to gather the saints in the West. Yeah, but I'm a sickly man who lives in England. I'm, it's gonna, the journey's going to kill me. Yep, it might, you know. And then, yeah, it does kill him, right? This is an actual event. A guy was like, you know, basically he, got, he caught a lot of crap because he said, uh, if I go West, it's going to kill me. And they're like, well, where's your faith, brother so-and-so? Where's your faith? And, you know, I'll never forget that where he said, I'll show them better, mother. He's talking to his wife. He said, I'll, you know, that, that really affected him. And he said, I'll show them better. And, and, and he died on the trail. He died heading west. Yeah. Now, now was, that, was that advice for him to go west? Was that proper for him? I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's between yeah. him and Jesus, I mean, really, I guess. only... Only him and God can really yeah, answer that question. Exactly. That's where right. some of these posts online are bugging me so bad is there are people who are saying, hey, could the prophet <clears throat> tell you an advice that, that harms anybody? I don't believe so. And it's like, dude, you don't read church history then. Yeah. <laughs> Willie Martin, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, I, I completely agree with that. I absolutely yeah. agree with that where it's like, you know, this life is – you know, what if something like this was just simply used to see who would do it, right? I mean, Brigham Young had a, had Ephraim Hanks shave his beard once, just because, right? He kept making him go back. He's like, hey, you shaved your beard, now you have a mustache. Go shave off the mustache, right? Yep. Now, yep. you know, for me, I have always used that example of Ephraim Hanks as well. I'm like, look, when the prophet asks you to do something, you freaking do it, you know? And if he asks you to do something that's that's contrary, it's on him. It's on his shoulders, right? 
That's not to say you don't pray about it. That's the, it doesn't absolve you of all 100% responsibility. But I think that there is enough trust in the office of the, the, the president of the church as being a mouthpiece and a prophet of God to where you can say with a certain level of, you know, of, uh, I don't even know what the right word is here, but a certain level of trust, I guess, is to be like, mm -hmm. is to be like, look, when the prophet asks me to do something, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? And that, yeah. you know, so, so for, for Alan, for Alan, I, I've prayed about this for two nights in a row now. I'm going to keep praying about it. I do feel at peace about it, right? I, I do feel at peace. Like this, yeah, initially, yeah, initially this definitely had, had me twisted up in knots because I was like, gosh dang it man for a year i've been talking about this and how stupid it is you know to get a to get a uh, vaccine and stuff even when the prophet got it i was like okay they're old you know and for them to come out and say look we urge everybody to get it they're not saying we urge everybody over 70 to get it you know we're, we're not urging those over 50 they're saying look we urge everybody to get it that's why it has such a bad taste, too. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. and yeah. I've I've had the COVID nineteen. I had it, and I didn't ha get it that bad. It wasn't a huge deal. It was irritating, <laughs> you know. I couldn't taste for a <laughs> while, but I did. It wasn't a huge deal to me. And so, I guess I guess you know, long 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 rebuttal short here. Not even a rebuttal, I guess, just conversation. Long point short here is, for me, I find a lot of solace in trusting what the president of the church has said and that is a place i've trained my children to be as well you know and, and i've always said you need to pray about it because you need to come in line you know just like um that two lines of communication october 2010 talk in general conference there are two lines of communication those two lines should run run together right they should back each other up and they should guide you together where you need to go Oh, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just keep, keep I keep going back to this idea of councils lately, uh, because of the council of fifty minutes that were released a few years ago, and the people delving into those. It's been really cool. Um, they they spoke specifically. Joseph Smith wanted everyone to express their theories. Express your testimony, your doctrine, your faith, and your theories. And as a church, we very much frown culturally on talking about anything that you might call a mystery. Anything that's like out there. And it's like, that's where I live. Yeah, I love it there. I mean, and this, I, we just recently had someone in church um, during a Sunday school lesson. I think it was section 76 or 7 that he was covering, where God literally is like, let me show you a mystery. And then he goes on later in the lesson to be like, now don't look into any of the mysteries, just stay in the simple things of the gospel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, God is literally telling you, here's a mystery, and I want you to, to understand, and it's the three kingdoms of glory. And we teach that like second, third lesson to investigators of the church. Yeah. Like we teach mysteries. Everything in this gospel is mysteries. If you really get down to it, isn't, yeah. is not faith a mystery is not baptism as simple as that comes across is not that baptism, a mystery the to most of the world, the atonement for that matter. Yeah. Uh, Brigham Young in a, in a kind of odd way of putting it <laughs> still put it this way. He said that any man who has more light and knowledge than you will be a God to you. Mm-hmm. I mean, in a very real way, like, if I can show you a mystery, I, I become like a god to you. I'm able to reveal something to you. We're all of the same species. We are all of God's children. Yeah. And we're able to reveal things to each other just as much as we're able to get it from God. I mean, I think that's a very true principle. While I'm not anywhere near perfection... I can still be a facilitator for revelation for the Holy Ghost. And the need for a council, the need to express theories among each other about what we think, about what we're going through and finding and researching or whatever, um, 
I believe that's critical for revelation because it opens our mind to possibilities that if we don't consider, obviously we won't have that revelation. On this particular topic, I really do wonder if there is a council where he's getting any information like I have. Yeah. Is there anyone in the council of the Twelve or among the prophet who is, hey, I just looked at this QAnon website. <laughs> I, I really actually doubt it. It'd be Bednar. If it was anybody, it'd be Bednar. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, and it's, it's funny, too, because uh, I, look at, I look at BYU as an example. Um, because they are the church institution of higher learning, right? And I see these people come out pro-gay marriage. Yeah. I see these professors that are like, oh yeah, it's just a matter of time before the church does the same thing with gay marriage that they did with blacks and the priesthood. Yeah, right. And I see them say the same thing for communism. Uh, they actively teach evolution, despite the fact that prior prophets have said that evolution is an antichrist principle. Yeah. Like, you you have college professors at BYU. I'm sure they're great, wonderful members of the church. Maybe half of them, and they're teaching things that I would absolutely have issue with. Yeah. Right. And so I reserve the right to disagree. I reserve the right to say, hey, this is the gospel according to my interpretation and understanding what I've been given, light and knowledge. I believe you're wrong. Uh, and even something that isn't salvation dependent, like the origin of the Book of Mormon actual uh, anthropology. Right. You know, I've, I've, I've seen people who I absolutely love, Daniel Peterson, who goes off on topics like the Book of Abraham, and I feel like everything he's getting is true. And then he talks about the origin, or the anthropology of the Book of Mormon, and I'm like, everything you're saying is wrong. Yeah, we'll get him. Someday. And, <laughs> and uh, it's just an interesting thing to be like, okay, we, we place the prophet as, as a very, very high pedestal. Right. I mean, we we literally have things where we think, you know, everything he says, I need to take as scripture yeah. when he comes to that pulpit. And then you look at guys who are at lesser positions, like a professor at BYU, but he's a professor at BYU. He has PhDs. He's taught his whole life. He's been involved in that. And, you know, he, I disagree with him on stuff. And somehow it's better. But then I get down to my level. I have no education to speak of. A couple years of college, not a big deal. I have literally only self-education to blame for the majority of my gospel understanding and learning. Yeah. And yeah, getting it from a lot of people, for sure. Like, I haven't had that great vision. I'm not the author of, of a lot of these things, but as I learn them and interpret them and inculcate them into my thinking, uh, there's a lot of filtering that goes on, but I feel like I have a super good handle on so much more than I ever thought I would. What I'm getting at in all of this is the gr So, okay, I'm going to go to another quote because I like doing that, right? <laughs> <laughs> there's a the first duty of a man is to think for himself that's jose Mar marty i think all of us have to realize that we have to respect ourselves as an authority and not in the sense of like i know everything not in the sense of this black and white argument that goes on on Facebook, but that's what revelation is, is that you're asking God to make you an authority. Yeah, in your own life, you're asking yeah. For, you're asking for him, through a spiritual means, to turn you into a source of truth. And that's an intimidating thing. Yeah. Because... 
when you are a source for truth, what's the obligation? Every man, it becomes every man to warn his neighbor. And so as I think about these these topics, if if I've been getting a whole lot of false information, that sucks, and I hope it'll be shown to me. But at yeah. this time, it feels like either the elector being deceived or the elector being deceived. <laughs> I, I, the only other th third option is maybe we're not all elect. But it feels like, like that somewhere here, there's a mistake, there's an error. Yeah. And so if I feel that way, then I hesitate to act until I can rationalize that out in my own mind and with my own revelation. Yet online, it's like, nope, you have to make a decision today or screw you, we're going to excommunicate you. And so I hope, from my perspective, it, it's more of a, I, I hope everyone can bring themselves to take a step back and go through this process of having a council. Whether that be with yourself and God, if that's the only council you can manage to bring up, but otherwise counsel with friends, with family, with the scripture, with everything you can find, counsel, theorize, so that if you're able to get revelation, it comes in the midst of information that it's drawn from somewhere and it's not just whole cloth manufactured um, without thought or effort. Everything has to be created spiritually before physically. And I believe that's this process that we're going through here live on radio <laughs> is this process of a council. Yeah. And I reserve the right to be wrong. I reserve the right to be able to change my mind and able to get new information. Yeah. And I reserve that right for the leaders of the church. I, I, I do not want to assume that if they say something I mean, the, the Catholics do this, and they get in so many pretzels as they go from Pope to Pope as they contradict each other. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, I don't want to assume that people are acting on bad faith with malicious intent, um, while at the same time assuming that the majority of the governments of the world are doing just that. But I don't want to assume it of my prophet. Right. And if you let me... <laughs> If you'll, if you'll allow me time to process this, well, you know what? There may be a big enough stink about this from members of the church that they do come out and say, hey, we didn't change the handbook to say it's mandatory. So stop calling each other apostate. Right. Yeah, seriously. And if they come out with that, how relieved will we all be? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Uh, well, all this this myopicness, right? This this pointed pain over something that could easily just change tomorrow, right? But yeah, you know, I I want to. I'm glad you got there, Kimball, because I I feel the need to balance out what Curtis believes on this podcast. I, I've been hitting one drum really hard, but I want to point out that I may sound resolute right now and and i do hold to what i've been given thus far but i do have a commitment to really consider this i mean because because uh, of who it came from like i i don't discount the prophet for who he is and what he's doing and so it is my wholesome promise to this podcast to the people that listen that i am going to take time to really dive into this again I'm going to take a step back from where I, where the revelation has brought me thus far. I'm going to take myself out of the equation. I'm going to bring it to the Lord 
and reserve the right that I could change, you know, that, that things will, can move upon me for whatever reason. And I could go back the other direction. And I think that's fine. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the process of this life. And, and if, and if it does change, I will, I'll say it. You know, I'll, I'll put it out here, right here on the podcast. So everybody knows, but right. at the same time, I'm not going to back down from where I am right now. And I think, I think, that's all we can ask of each other, really. No, I mean that's that's what happened to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I yeah. I was lockstep with you guys on that. You know what I mean? It was like, no, nah, man, I'm not, I don't need it. I don't need that that thing. And and I mean, we've even you know, it, it's very common for people to to take that that shot, that vaccine, and then to to say, oh, it's that's the mark of the beast. That is the mark of the beast. You know what I mean? It's like, mm, yeah. no, it's not. You know, it's, it's definitely not. You know, I think that we we really need to do that podcast. Yeah, I know. Uh, we do. I'm pretty sure that's coming up next. So yeah. people just hold your horses. <laughs> I, I have so much stuff on that that I can't wait to, to talk about. But right. yeah, I have some stuff too, yeah. I mean, I, I think that we need to recognize and realize that so I four I, hour podcast session. I know, Let's right? Let's do it. I know. We totally <laughs> should. We we actually could really easily. We could we could make that. Uh, we could do that couple episodes on that. Maybe we should. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about that afterwards. No, it's all good. But I think that we need to to realize and recognize that there are evil designs, you know, uh, of men, definitely right now in the last days and stuff. Yep. We've done a few podcasts yes, recently. Yes, we've definitely ground. done a few podcasts on that, and I, but we need to recognize and realize that these evil men are looking for uh, opportunity. Right now, sometimes they will manufacture opportunity. That absolutely is true, but oftentimes, and probably more often than not, these these opportunities that arise are nothing more than that. They are opportunities. Right. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things. I, I was on my mission during Hurricane Katrina, right? Me too. Yeah, and so like, like I was in Texas. Where did you serve again, Kimball? Where were you Mississippi. at? Mississippi. Okay, so yeah, so I was up near the Metroplex, near the Dallas Fort Worth area, and we had floods of people heading up, right? And seeing you know all this devastation and all this crap that happened, and then hearing you know. Once I got home, looking into it further from what just from what I saw on the ground, you know, you see that uh, that President Bush wound up basically uh, throwing out the Constitution. He had uh, police officers and sheriffs and stuff going through and confiscating guns during this time. Yep. When lo- looting was going crazy, right? When you absolutely needed your gun, they were yeah. they would just take it. And it was a very big wake-up call to America. That's, that's one of those things where we said, okay, we're, we're in trouble. This isn't America anymore, you know? And I think that we need to keep that in yeah. mind because that wasn't the, the hurricane's fault, right? <laughs> that, that was the yeah. designs of evil men, you know? And, and Look at George Bush. Exactly, yeah. Look at George Bush. But, you know, we, we need to keep stuff like that in mind. We need to realize that... You know, sometimes there, it's just it's just opportunity. So regardless, like I believe this thing was you know leaked from a lab, whether it was accident or not, no idea. But regardless of that, this was an opportunity for people to to take and wield some power that they should not wield. Right? Let's not project that on the church leadership, though, because that I think is where we get into trouble. The church leadership is not trying to exercise unrighteous dominion. They are not trying to, you know, deceive us in some way, right? When you look at President Nelson and the messages that he has put out on YouTube and stuff like that and and through the LDS.org, you know, that man is full of nothing but hope and love. You can just feel it emanating from him, you know? And I think that was... That really was my biggest fear and why you know we, we are talking about this now was that people are going to apostatize, legitimately apostatize over this. And I do not want this platform that we have and our audience to apostatize over this. 
I don't want people to look at things that we say and misconstrue them and think that what we are calling for is for people to to forsake the you know, the, the brethren and forsake the prophet because that's not that's not the correct way to go. That's not what's happening here, right? We need to we, we need to look deep into this like Curtis is saying, you know. We need to we need to research it, we need to look deep into it. And we need to keep those two lines of communication open, the priesthood line and the you know the, the personal one. Yep. And that's like that was my biggest thing was I do not want to stand before Jesus on the judgment bar and have him say, you led people away from my church. Why would you do that? What, you know, give me an excuse now. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, because it's not going to go well <laughs> for me. So my, my admonition is to, you know, obviously, just like, just like the primary song say, follow the prophet. He knows the way, you know. Don't discount anything the prophet says, regardless of what it's about. Don't forsake the gospel over this. The church is true. President Nelson is a prophet of God, right? The twelve apostles, the quorum of the twelve apostles, are the quorum of the twelve apostles that Jesus has selected, right? And like I say, there's a bunch of stuff that I won't go into that go along with that, some cool ordinance things. Yeah. And and that is what we need to hold to. Like, if we need to go back to to ground zero and say, okay, let's let's look at the Book of Mormon, let's look at Joseph Smith, because everything is is pivotal on that. So if we need to go back to it, let's go back to that and let's figure that out first. But that that is my that that's Alan's message in a nutshell, right? Regardless yeah. of what you decide to do, President Russell M. Nelson is the Lord's mouthpiece, the only authorized mouthpiece on the earth today. Say that name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You want to go, Kimball? Or you want me to go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can go. I, cause I, I do know. I think I know where I'm going to be. So okay. right now, uh, I'm up in Salt Lake. And yesterday, we took the kids on a tour through the conference center. It's one of... One of the things we like to do when we come up here for like a little mini vacation, I think we've done it a few times, but every time it's fun. And it's Darvish tar on the handles and the trim. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> exactly. And uh, so, you know, we, we let the missionaries take us on the tour and we stopped in the Book of Mormon room like they usually do. And we went through the portraits they have there. And my one of my middle children, the oldest of the younger three, he had a lot of questions. He was asking about this person, he was asking about that person. He was going from picture to picture and wanted to know the story. And so, you know, I was I was having to sum up, you know, those stories to him and try to get the points across. And that's, you know, and this is all in the light of all this stuff going on, right? I'm here at church headquarters, basically. And, uh, and as I was more or less bearing my testimony to him about the Book of Mormon over and over again, about what I knew about these people he was looking at, it really just resounded with me about how important the Book of Mormon is to all of this, right? And and I just want to I want to plead with people who are on the edge or who are worried or you know they have a lot of anxiety over this that hopefully this this small thing and i really do think in the long scheme of things this will be a small thing do not let it steal away what you know to be true about the book of mormon i mean christ he came to this continent he taught the people here nephi was a prophet samuel was a prophet ether did see god and and joseph smith did bring about the book of mormon by the power of god and he was and is a prophet of the lord and and hold on to those things. You know, the, the fruit of Joseph is still, it resounds strongly in my heart. And and it, it makes these things that we're fighting over so insignificant when we really go back to the heart of where our testimony is. And and I don't want to make light of it because I know that the you know the, oftentimes people these small things add up to a lot. You know, it's, I think, zerging, right? It's a death by a thousand needles. Yeah. And I think 
I think we're getting a lot of needles and there's a lot of members who have had a bunch of needles already. And so they're getting more and more needles. And I understand that this is for some people, this is not a light thing, but I would, you know, return back to what it is that got you here to begin with. And if that leads you to being at peace with whatever president Nelson decides to say and whatever your decision is with that, that's hopefully we can all get there. You know, I, I, like I said, I still don't know where I'll come down on this event. You know, finally, I know where I am now and I'm, I'm grateful for what I've been given, but I know where my testimony resides. It resides with the book of Mormon. It resides with Christ. It resides with knowing that Joseph was a prophet and those things are resolute in me. And I know that the Lord will lead me through this if I am, if I'm bendable, if I'm able to listen to him and I'll have peace just as I did before. I had commotion, I had pain, but then I had peace. And here we are, there's a little bit more commotion, a little bit more pain, information I need to consider. But I do have faith and trust in God to lead me through this. He will give us peace. And so I know that there are people like that, they're, you know, listening, that are in the same boat. So find find the peace that the Lord gives through through the scriptures, through his prophets. And however that leads you to go, awesome. Follow that path wherever the Lord sends you. And I'll say that in the name of Jesus Christ and and say, walk as children of light. Well said. Amen. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you know, um, I, I keep coming back to the timeline we're in. Does this not feel like the tribulation of the church? Yeah. We're not being called upon to pioneer somewhere. We're not being called upon to wage a war. And yet, how much struggle is there among the church today? I mean, this is, this is definitely end times, if, if you ask me. And in, in that same light, um, maybe there's a whole lot of people on both sides of the issue that are really getting off on telling the other side off. Oh, there's sure. a lot of red meat, if you will. Um, yeah. So Thomas Sells, he has a quote that I really like. He says, the reason so many people misunderstand so many issues is not that these issues are so complex but that people do not want a factual or analytical explanation that leaves them emotionally unsatisfied. You know, a lot of the reason why it's really hard to explain economics to a communist is because they don't really care about the facts. They just want to feel good. They want to feel good about hating someone who has more money than them. They want... You know, Satan plays off those kinds of emotions. He wants us to have these kinds of visceral reactions. He wants us to hate each other. And again, like I said in, towards the beginning, what better issue to divide the church than this? Yeah. I mean, can you name for me another issue that the church would have any division on? If the prophet said, hey, you really need your food storage, pretty sure we're not having a riot. Yeah. You know, if, if he came out with almost anything that we've talked about on our podcast, like this is the one that in my head is like, okay, this is the one where it's like, it's not super clearly defined. There's not a whole lot of scriptures where people had vaccines. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot of references. And like you say, you know, people assuming it's the mark of the beast. And I really want that podcast. I know, <laughs> <'Cause> you too. <laughs> I feel like all the pieces are out there for it. It's just not assembled. Yeah. But, you know, making those kinds of accusations. Oh, this shot's the mark of the beast. And no, no, it's mark of the beast has a lot more than that. Yeah. But, you know, what better, what better thing to get everybody worked up over, anxious over, accusatory over, um, and it's working, 
and it's sad that it's working. Uh, I, I would love if it didn't. But if, if any of you listening are left emotionally unsatisfied, I hope this is the reason. That you wanted red meat and we didn't give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. I wasn't going to slit your throats over the, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but again, like I've, I've got my information from... I've got the recommendation of the prophet and I've got a year and a half of study into all kinds of topics. There's things I believe that aren't being taught by the church. I hope that doesn't excommunicate me. There's things I believe that were taught by the church and aren't now. I hope that doesn't excommunicate me. There's things I believe that the church has said we do believe, but we don't teach. And I hope that doesn't excommunicate me. <laughs> yeah. And in this specific topic, um, again, like we say, prayer, thought, it's a continual process. We've got to act on the light and knowledge we have, the revelations we get. Um, revelation is a constant thing. It is as constant as gravity. It's faster than the speed of light. It is so important. And as much as people will use sometimes revelation as an accusatory thing, hey, a devil can come as an angel of light, or um, you're just saying that to get out of doing what the prophet says. Like, like I've seen so many posts this week, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. that are all over the map on these kinds of issues. But in the end, I've, I've, like Curtis was saying, I've really reached a point where I'm comfortable with where I am. This did, this did strike me as odd, but it did not shake my faith in the gospel. And I think that's where a lot of members are very fragile. Mm -hmm. is in a belief of infallibility in the church, in its doctrines, in its members in particular. If you believe that every church member is infallible, you'll last a year, maybe. Most <laughs> don't last a couple months who convert to the church with the impression that everyone needs to be perfect in it. There's a lot of converts to this church that don't show up that next week because... Something was said. Something happened. I hope this isn't it. I hope that this is something that members weigh and carefully consider and get revelation on. My position hasn't changed from several posts I've made several months ago. I hope everyone who gets revelation to get this shot gets it. I hope everyone who gets revelation not to get to this shot gets it. And I believe this advice and counsel allows for both options. They are urging and not requiring. It was a requirement of Moses to look at that snake on the staff in order to live. It's a requirement in order to enter the temple that you understand and obey the word of wisdom. If they alter that doctrine, that would be a very significant change. It would be very eye-opening to me. And until they do, I will believe that there is room for an allowance of opinion, of thought, and of counsel. Like with the Word of Wisdom as well, this revelation was initially introduced as advice, as counsel. And later on was initiated into doctrine and covenant. This vaccine is experimental, and this advice, I think, is also to a degree experimental. And those who reserve their right to wait, you have my blessing, and I'm right along with you. And I'll let you know if I change my mind. Perhaps this advice 
really will lead to some people leaving the church, and that's a sad thing. Perhaps this advice really will give people that screw tape letter feeling of, wow, look at how much better I am than everyone else who hasn't taken the shot. And that's a sad mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. So, how to conclude? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, you've been circling the landing. You can't quite find the spot. Huh? I, I can't because I, I would rather have questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be questioned. Yeah. I mean, this is an answer. It is from a prophet, but can we question it? Can we debate it? Can we have a council? And obviously we are like the three of us. Yeah. Thank goodness. You guys are open to my opinions because i have been all over the map with some crazy stuff this last year <laughs> and you guys have been at the forefront of all of it <laughs> and hopefully some of it's been truly revelatory and inspiring i, I really do want that in as my legacy of influence um i don't have a position in the church like the prophet I do have that position in my family. I have that position where I am meant to be the source of revelation and authority in my family. And so I guess I'll conclude simply with this. I pray that in my sphere of influence, I do what's right according to the spirit, according to revelation and in line with the truth with true doctrine and with the truth that this church is true. And that's just about as much as I can hope for. And I'll say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.